Okay, so to utilize the silver lung system is pretty straightforward. We have uh, rinsed our system out with distilled water. You do not want to use chemicals for that process. You never want to use any detergents in, in this uh, system from what they said. We have the silver rods here that we have cleaned with our copper bristle brush and then rinsed one more time with distilled water. And we want to put these electrodes in the uh, stopper. You want to be very careful to only get about an eighth of an inch above and the rod should be perfectly straight. Don't force these, don't bend these. And again, we don't want to touch these with our fingers because we don't want the oils and the salts from our skin to contaminate the mixture. Next up, we're going to go ahead and pour our distilled water into the beaker. And we may have to make a test stop because we want it to be within an eighth of an inch of the top. Being this is the first time we're making a batch, we want to take an accurate measurement. So we need to bring it up just a little bit more. That might be too much. Let's take a look. Yep, that's a little much, so we'll just... And one for my home. Pour a little out. There we go. That looks to be about where we need it. Pour just a smidge more in. Once you do this a few times, you'll get pretty good at it. There we go. We want them to be perfectly straight. So we've cleaned everything and sanitized everything. We're about ready to make our first solution. We're gonna be making a 10 part per million solution. And so we're gonna place it on the base and you want the, the little um, magnetic mixer at the bottom to find its center. It looks like it found its center. You take the clips and it doesn't matter which rod goes on what clips, the circuitry inside will dictate where it goes. Once everything's set up, oh, one other thing, I've already tested this, but let's go ahead and for the video test this. You want to do a final test of your distilled water with your meter to make sure that the water is within one part per million. And before we put this in the solution, we want to rinse this off with distilled water. It is not waterproof, however, so don't dunk it in water. And then we take a, a reading and it is reading perfect zero. So we know that the water inside here is not contaminated. That was just our final check. I'm gonna let that air dry a little bit. So we'll put the cap back on. It's about an eighth of an inch. When you put the cap on, you don't wanna really push it tight. You just wanna create an airtight seal. It doesn't take much pressure at all. I wanna make sure these are straight or as straight as you can make them. Then put the electrodes the clips on the silver rods and then once everything is checked out again we got magnetic center we're going to go ahead and put this on low so now it is making the solution and on low this should um, give us a 10 part per million um, pure water and silver in roughly 90 minutes so we're going to let that go for 90 minutes it's important to have the water temperature at 70 degrees. Uh, you do not want to do this in a cold environment or the circuitry in the silver lung device may not turn itself off at the appropriate time. 
as a fail safe, you should put a timer on for 90 minutes and be ready to check it. Um, especially if your environmental, if your environment is not ideal. As you can hear, or maybe not hear, this stuff is almost silent when you're making it. Uh, it is a very easy system to use. And we'll check back in 90 minutes. Many, many minutes later. Okay, after about 90 minutes, our solution has finished. The blue light is blinking, indicating that it is done. So we are going to turn the unit off. And then we're going to test our solution with our PPM dissolved solids meter. And these meters, again, are specifically calibrated for the silver ion solution. If you recalibrate it, it's not going to pick up what it needs to pick up according to the instruction manual. So as you lift up, you'll see that the silver rods are now discolored um, from the process of putting the silver into the, the electrolysis of putting the silver into the water. And then you got to clean these up again before you can reuse them. Be careful as you take it out so that you don't knock off any of the, of the um, particles off of the rods. So we have a good uh, clean solution here. I'm going to turn on my dissolved solid meter. I'm going to rinse it off a little bit with some distilled water. We're going to read at zero. And when we put it in the solution, we should be at seven to 10 parts per million. It is reading exactly 10 parts per million. So this solution that we wanted to create, which was an ionic silver, was ranging in the seven to 10 and then it's showing 10. So we know that the process has completed. We're gonna clean that off again. Everything you do when you're cleaning this stuff, you only wanna use distilled water, no harsh chemicals, no soaps. All of that can leave residues in your beakers, in your equipment and um, taint your final product. So now we have our ionic silver. This is how the silver lung system works. On high, you can create a higher concentration, which then you can put some reducer in to create true colloidal silver. And otherwise you're making ionic silver, which is this clear liquid here that you would put in a UV sensitive um, brown bottle. So we're gonna bottle this up and have it for the numerous uses that ionic and colloidal silver is used for. My name is Ryan with Back Road Reviews. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.